just give me a sec. Um, but anyways, let's talk about this for let's talk about what we're going to be going into is the offensive variation strategy. Um, variation or variant is what the way people say it. I just, I don't care. But there's two strategy, two tr branch strategies. If you choose a specific like I do, that will lead you to different strategies. And wait a second. Sorry, I'm like popped out. Uh, but anyway, that will lead to the different strategies if you choose specific. But if you choose variation or variant, that will lead to, lead to different strategies. Um, now, what is variation? Variation, uh, because I did talk about it a little bit in my um, specific offensive strategy team or uh, tutorial, is pretty much when you ch you change your units when you're about to go into a battle, depending on the battle. And my er, and I suggest if you do variation, you should watch my video on how to analyze your opponent. That really would help you. Um, but anyways, as such for that, let's get the higher ones are easier to do this with. Oh god, oh god. Oh, uh. oh, well, I honestly can say I don't think he bought DLC currency. I don't know, I, I, can, I can say that. You know. But anyways, I mean, I, I just think he played this a little bit. Anyways, as for this one, as you can technically see, his AA is pretty good. He doesn't have very good MG nests. And he has a lot of snap charts, which was meaning you gotta want to bring long distance enemies. You're gonna want to. So, sorry, but, but you're gonna want to bring long distance enemies for that, such as snipers and sharpshooters and bombers and all that. That great stuff. So, variation changes depending on what the battle is, as you can tell. Now, what I went over mainly with the pros to doing a specific army work, which is my type of army. I like a specific. Now, what's the good side of doing variation? Is for one, you always do come with the right men when you need them. The next one is that you most of the time won't get the drop. The enemy won't get the drop on you with stuff that you may have not known was there. So, that's always a nice little thing to do. And most of the time you will analyze it correctly so you will come prepared for the right job using the utilizing the right perks as well. Because variation does not just mean you change your men. That means you change the perks on your men depending on the battle. If you feel like this is going to be a funnel battle, you may change to use unstoppable. Uh, if you feel like this is going to be a long battle, you may want rapid deployment and minimum wage. It all depends and it varies. Which is uh, variation. I mean, a little more thinking goes into it. Um, specific, it's you just do whatever you do. Same perks, same guys, whatever. Um, but that being said, the variation strategy is, it's, I wouldn't want to say complicated, I would just like to state, you gotta make sure that you're, you're doing it right. Because people can overanalyze things, and overanalyze things, and that will make you bring the wrong and or the wrong guys. Overanalyzing them would say here. Well, let me. I'm trying to. I'm trying to word this right, but um, overanalyzing it is you're going through every detail. So you can see they have a lot of grunts. So you're gonna want to bring long distance enemies that can also take out crowds. And of course, they have general contractors, so their defenses are gonna be up. Like, I'm around this guy really likes snipers. And he has a sniper's fully upgraded, so you really want someone strong and powerful. That's over analyzing it, and it costs you sometimes to bring the wrong tools for the right job. So be careful you don't over analyze stuff. It's the downfall of variation. Anyway, variation can also be done on. The variation can be also done on base defending. I mean, my friend, he didn't have enough build points to um, place down both a sniper tower and an AA gun. And depending on the wave he was before the randomly generated waves, he would just change it between sniper tower and AA gun. 
Variation bases are not seen a lot lately, but they are they are still around. They are still around. And I don't recommend the variation base. People also change their troops depending on the job, their command cards depending on the job. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and all of that. Um, like I say, variation base isn't as good as variation offense. Variation defense offense, you know. Um, so variation offense. Let's, let's dive a little deeper with this one. Um, some of the strategies that you can perform with this consist of one of the harder strategies that my friend plays with called Scorched Earth. Or not, uh, not Scorched Earth, sorry. Scorched Earth is something else my friend plays with. He, that one's, uh, specific, but, um, uh, the strategy my friend plays with, he likes to call it uh, Blitzkrieg, like when, you know, during World Wars, that was what they were doing, they were doing Blitzkrieg, taking islands, so, um, he likes to do that, Blitzkrieg is a strategy, and I will actually specifically have a video on this, this, uh, this strategy my friend uses called Blitzkrieg, but pretty much, Blitzkrieg during the war was, you would go to different islands and utilize different parts of war, um, with that, it's it will it will help you like the whole point of this strategy is and I'm sorry if I'm you know not I'm trying to think of how to word this correctly so it doesn't sound like I'm like you know like some godly strategy it Blake Street is the is the fact of knowing what to hit when you need to hit it and not hitting it, um, you know, later or earlier, or saving up your specialty, your specials, uh, using the right men for the job, as such, but also making also specific. So that can be done by, say, a base with like two bunkers, two sniper towers. Uh, you know, it's both it's both close and far. So what you would do is naturally for this. You would send in your snipers first, you would wait a second for to send in your men, then you would send in your men. So they be the snipers would be killing the enemies that are getting close, and then they would also be weakening the sniper towers. And then your guys should have arrived by now. So that would be and hopefully the sniper towers would be weaker or MG nests. And your guys can get in a lot easier. That's the basis of it. I'm gonna say, and that you people are probably thinking that's a pretty simple strategy. I'm gonna explain why this one is actually such a good strategy to use. And as I mentioned ur earlier, Scorched Earth is specific. However, my friend did play it around with this. He, he as his Scorched Earth, again, was his World War strategy in World War II. The Nazis were invading Russia, so Russia burned down their whole, the, but Russia burned down their own city, so there would be nothing for the Nazis to take. Now, the whole point of this is not that you're gonna destroy your own structures. The point of this is to, the net, honestly, it has nothing to do with the actual strategy. Honestly, you need flamers. It's uh, extremely hard to do. It, but it's, honestly, 99% chance you will not be able to do it. If you fail to do it, you will most definitely lose a battle. If you somehow, with that 1% chance, actually do somehow achieve Scorched Earth and actually make a win, no matter what difficulty, free by into red through this red skull, you will win if you somehow achieve it perfectly. Warning you, you do need the flamer. You need to be a higher level so you can get those card slots. And you, you honestly need quite a bit of perks. So be careful on that one. Um, however, Scorched Earth has become easier ever since they added the chemist. The chemist, as he may not shoot fire, he does do the same thing the flamer does. So if you have the chemist, Scorched Earth will come easier to you. But me and my friend have, do not have the chemist yet. The friend that created the Scorched Earth strategy, or utilized that best. He doesn't have it yet, however, he has gone over it with me and said, if I had the chemist, this would make the strategy so much easier because you wouldn't need to use all this and all that. You wouldn't need to use rally flags to hold your man back. It would honestly save a lot of time and loss supplies to sell the chemist. If you have the chemist, you this strategy should be a lot easier for you. So, but anyways, don't want to get 
I want to get ahead of myself talking about different strategies. I want to talk mainly about the variation strategy. And variation can be overwhelming. You have to figure out which perks to put on which man and all that. Which can, again, well, you make you overthink stuff and put the wrong perks on them. So, you know what? Variation is hard to do. You gotta make sure you don't overthink it. You gotta think of the right amount. Now, the cons of this, as there may be a lot of pros and or and a lot of cons, the biggest cons is you gotta constantly either be changing the perks up between man to man, or you gotta have all these perks. So you also gotta have a lot of valor to have this. So variation, I don't think is for everyone. Specific is for everyone. I personally like specific. So you, the way you choose it, you go, you know. Which one ever suits you the best, go with it. Um, and I will be doing the offensive strategies, and I will even be labeling them in the title if they are a variation or a specific offensive strategy. Anyways, this one was a shorter video, but I did say I would do this video, and I felt like I needed to do this video. So, I'm Call Valanches, otherwise known as the Guns Up Veteran. Over and out. Oh, wait. Like, <laughs> Scream went off, but um, I did want to actually say this before I ended it. Is um, is a chemist? I'm actually gotta check if the chemist. Yep, chemist is still available for sale. I think the this is the last day of the event. I think it won't be on tomorrow. Um, oh wow, well, you got enough. I hope you grinded enough for your card packs up. I really did. Um, if you didn't like me, I didn't even get one because I didn't even see anyone with the chemist. I mean, it sucks for me, and it sucks for you. I mean, hopefully the next event will be a lot better that will contribute to both the community and the people that don't own the chemist. However, that event I do think was a good idea. I don't think they should have done it the, the day they released the chemist, because then no one had a chance to actually get him. You know? Anyways, I really hope the next event is a lot easier to do and has a reward payout that is very good. Um... I hope maybe it's sort of like if you every three victories, you know, you get a free common card pack, something like that, or I mean, you know, attack card pack, something like that. Um, I feel like it would really the guns up community would all benefit from this, but well, I know. So, anyways, I am Covalent, as otherwise known as the guns up veteran. Over and out.